This time on Engine Masters, big block blower, nitrous, E85, 1500 horsepower! You really have to see this. I have not been this pumped up for an episode of Engine Masters in a long time because we are leaving nothing on the table. We are gonna put some stank on this thing. Here's how it's gonna go. We are gonna test this engine naturally aspirated on gasoline, then with this 871 supercharger at a couple different boost levels on gas. Then we're gonna put nitrous oxide on top of that. Then we're gonna switch it to E85 fuel and see what kind of power gains that gives us and then we are going to nitrous it on E85. Not playing around this time. Let me tell you about the combination here because this is also personal to me. This long block is a 555 cubic inch big block Chevy, and I ran this at Bonneville Salt Flats in 2007 and did something I don't think anybody's ever done. We set five records in five days with four different drivers. And so this engine has a lot of legacy for me. The bottom end, it's a stout block, it's a forged crank, it's billet rods, it's CP pistons. The bummer about it is it's only 8.3 to one compression. These days, if you're building for boost in nitrous, you would go ahead and run, you know, 10 and a half to one, 11 to one, something like that. But way back when we built it, 8.3 was the number. So we are sacrificing a little power. The heads on top of this thing are an Airflow Research or AFR 357 Magnum. The camshaft is another no fooling around unit. The duration at 50 thousandths is 281 and 290 on this thing, and it's got like 800 lift. But now we get into the meat of it. The blower shop 871 Roots Supercharger. If you're not keyed into this, the blower shop are the guys to see these days for street or race superchargers. This is the same thing that Mike Finnegan, who's my co-host on the Roadkill Show, he's got this on his Hemi in the Blasphemy 55 Chevy that won drag week and that made 1100 horsepower to the tires doing it and also ran 850s. Same exact supercharger, except for he's got EFI nozzles in the side of it. This thing is a high helix deal, hardened rotors, Teflon stripped, blueprinted to the nth degree, ported at the bottom to improve the flow out of it. This is as good as a regular guy 871 supercharger gets these days. Now, up top, this is an NOS nitrous system. We did not custom make this. I can't bend lines like this. You can buy this straight out of the box. It is like a 16 nozzle fogger for the top of a Roots style supercharger, and we are gonna make good use of that. On the top, two dominators. There's no 4150 carburetors around here. Not when you've got 1,050 CFM each. We're gonna start off with Holly's gasoline dominator, and as we progress, you're gonna see us add QFT E85 carburetors. Now, we've already tested this naturally aspirated, and so we're gonna show you that. We're gonna roll it in, and our very first dyno test on camera is gonna be with the blower, on gasoline, no nitrous, with sort of mediocre boost. Watch what happens here. This is gonna be legit greatness. First of all, I think we should have the pandemic every day because this is a lot more comfortable than cramming in the little dino room. I agree. It's, it's kind of normal. awesome. Yeah, it is kind of. Yeah, with the screens and everything. I guess what's gonna happen is they're gonna show us the engine here so that when it's blowing up, I can scream at you. And then when we come back to do data, we're gonna swap them so that he can actually read the screen from there. <laughs> I'd rather see him wear his glasses. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, the specs are oh, pretty yeah. good. I can see like an owl now. Second of all, I'm more excited about this than anything we've done in a long time. It's I've been big. waiting for this. It's big. It's big. <laughs> this supercharger is like a new level of 871 for me and the 555. I mean, we're gonna be making four digit power all day long. Oh yeah, and you gotta love the dommies with those secret little pipes underneath. Oh yeah, nitrous. Now this thing is gonna be beef. So what we're gonna do first is run the thing in its base configuration with the supercharger, What's the overdrive on it? 12, 12 and a half percent. 12 and a half percent over. It's making about nine and a half PSI. It'll make over a thousand horsepower. And then uh, after that, we'll start to add real horsepower to it. Ready to fire it up? I am. All right, baseline, here we go. Oh, it's gonna be good, Freiburger. Ah, 
<laughs> you got it. I'm excited with that. What, 1,050? Yeah. Let's call it up. It's making 1,052.3 horsepower at 7,200 RPM. Our torque peak is gonna be 882 right at the hit of 5,000 RPM. Since we're talking about power, let's look at the this curve versus naturally aspirated. I can read all this Boom. stuff. <laughs> okay, so I had to call up this comparison. When I first took this engine out of mothballs, I had Brulee pre-run it with a single four barrel carburetor naturally aspirated just to make sure that it was healthy. It made 768 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. And now it's making 1,052 at 7,200 RPM. So you can see the effects of the supercharger. This is comparatively low boost. This is half of what Finnegan runs in yeah. his Hemi. One half the boost. <laughs> And, wow. uh, and we're still making 1,052. I think we're doing good with thing. half the boost. Yeah, not bad. You look at the air-fuel ratio numbers and they're flat like fuel injection. It varies one-tenth during the whole pull. Yeah. Pretty amazing, good carburetors. Yeah, right, it's a good base. One thing I would be curious to note is the difference in intake air temperature at one boost level to another. Because one of the things I wonder is once we get into the E85 in particular, does it actually allow you to run more boost because it's a cooler charge? Like it's not just power because it's cooler, but also power because you can run more boost safely. Well, I would think so, because yeah. you have a lower temperature, you're gonna have more detonation resistance at that lower temperature, so you can run more boost, because ultimately it's total cylinder pressure that's gonna determine, determine it. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. Maybe we should run two boost levels here. We got Rocket Brand 118 in it, right? We do. Do we have something that is gonna make, you know, 14 instead of nine and a half? I don't know, we got some pulleys over there. I can go look. We're gonna go do pulley math. Be right back. <laughs> BRB, let me find the pulleys. Here's what we're doing. Our baseline pulley drive ratio was a 54 pulley on the bottom and a 48 on the top. That's the number of teeth on the pulley. You divide that out, you end up with 12.5% overdriven, meaning the supercharger is turning 12.5% more RPM than the engine itself. We're gonna change it up with a larger crankshaft pulley. This is a 57, which means it's going to what, 19% overdrive, a little bit more than 19%. So that's gonna increase the boost. Now, of course, this is purely scientific because what I'm trying to see is how much the manifold air temperature increases with an increase in boost. And of course, I wanna make more power. So we're gonna find out what that does. This isn't full on party pulley mode, but it's at least like happy hour mode, or maybe backyard barbecue mode. <laughs> it should be good. Okay, now Bruleo is warming it up. And uh, to be accurate, I said in there it was 19% overdrive. It's 18.75. Well, it made 908.2 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM, and our biggest horsepower was 1,065.9 at 7,200 RPM. Not as good as I had hoped. What was the gain in boost? We went from 9.9 to 11.7. So not a giant change, but I'm guessing it heated up the air quite a bit. Yeah, and, and this is probably not unlike what we've seen so many other times with gasoline, as you get to that point where it's just the per pound of boost, the first five or six is 40 or 50 horsepower per pound, and the last couple is what, 10 or 12? Uh, it wasn't a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it went from 1053 to 1060 something. Yeah. Yeah. Not worth it. So we're at the point of no return on gasoline where it's heating up the air, which is a greater detriment than the addition to boost. Plus, it brings risk of detonation and melting oh, electrodes. Well, and that's, see, we've, got, we've got air inlet temperature over 215 degrees. I mean, that's the thing about a roots blower. It's got that limitation compared to some other forms of supercharging. Yeah. It adds more heat when you really start pumping up the blower speed. We gained uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the manifold. The new manifold temperature with the bigger boost is 218 Fahrenheit as opposed to 198. So that's a solid 20 up. Yep. Okay, cool. So I guess we're moving on from here to nitrous. Nitros. Oh, this right. is okay. what I've been waiting for. I know, me too. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's not your motor. 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it won't be yours either. So Steve-O, there's a whole bunch of tubing here. This is like a fogger style system. And so, I mean, how's this jetted up? Tell me the, the rundown here. You got it, it's exactly like a fogger system. In fact, the jetting that we have in it, I took right off of uh, Holly's website for fogger jetting. So what we have in it now is, Holly claims that it's a 175 horsepower jet. We have eight number 22 nitrous jets in it. Right. For gasoline, we have an 18,000s fuel jet in it. So, I mean, what's the difference between running that kind of a setup or running just a regular plate system under each carburetor? This looks way more awesome. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's reason <laughs> enough. So, hopefully it works as good as it looks. It will. I think we're ready to go, right? Yeah. This is gonna be the nitrous pull. We've got the same pulleys on the thing, same tune-up. He's gonna hit it at 5,000 RPM and sweep it on up to 72. I hope it makes 1,300 horsepower. I can't wait to see it. So our peak torque number on nitrous oxide is actually 1,053.7 at 6,300 RPM. And the peak horsepower is 1,269.4 at 6,900 RPM. Okay, now that we've looked at our power, which is obviously huge, although it didn't hit the 1,300 number I was hoping for, uh, let's have a look at the manifold air temperature. Ooh. Interesting. No significant change there. It was 218 at yeah. peak, and now it's 214 at peak. Here's something that I find really strange. I'm hoping that the brilliance of brulee gives me some expert tutelage on why. Hey, I'm I on me. <laughs> <laughs> I expected the manifold air temperature to drop way low on the nitrous oxide. It really didn't. We saw a peak temperature of 218 with uh, no nitrous and 214 here with the nitrous. I think it's a combination of two things. I don't think it's cooling as much at this power level because there's more compression because it's more boost. Right. I don't think it cools as well, and I think that it's a probe issue as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what happened to boost. So our peak boost is the same at 11.7, but it did show right when you hit it at peak torque, the boost went up. So the red line is the boost curve with no nitrous. The black line is the boost curve with nitrous. So obviously, as soon as he hits the button and it re reaches peak torque, right here at 6,300, or I guess that's 65, the boost goes up, but then it drops back down. But since it's making more power, it's consuming more air and more nitrous and more fuel. So since the pulley ratio is the same and the RPM is the same, why doesn't it show more boost? I, I'm gonna throw it at the, at the sensor. I'm gonna say that closed down sensor isn't really quick enough to see the drop. Also, the higher output of the blower, the more pulley we put in it, the percentage of nitrous becomes smaller, so it makes less of a difference. If we had this at three pounds of boost, I think it would show even more cooling uh, because the rate of, of temperature versus nitrous is different. I thought that all of that stuff taking up space in the manifold would see the boost rise. And clearly I'm wrong, I'm just trying to discover why you guys think I'm wrong. The temperature. The temperature. Oh, which also adds dense, up to your yes. probe not actually yes. reading. Because if the temperature in the manifold drops that much, space. it takes up like space. Bing! Good Brule pull, just, Brule. Yeah. Good pull. Everyone's He's sitting there like, uh-oh, what affects pressure? Volume? Ooh, heat. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly, <laughs> that is exactly what was going on. That was pretty good. Good pull. Mm -hmm. That actually explains it. Okay, moving on to E85. Now we're doing our changeover to E85, which really only means pouring different gasoline in the tank and changing the carburetors. These are QFT 4500 series carburetors, similar to the Holley Dominator. They both flow 1,050 CFM, but the QFT is designed specifically for E85. So once we get this changed over, we're gonna be making big power. Now we've changed the fuel to E85, just to explain to you what that is and why would we be doing this. E85 is a gasoline you can buy at most pumps. It's not really available around here. You don't have it up in your place, do you? Yeah, it's oh, not really? really gasoline. It's like 15% gasoline and the rest is ethanol alcohol. Is that the idea? Yeah. 
theoretically, I think in California you'll find it's usually 75%, even though it's advertised at 85%. It's a corn-based alcohol. And the reason that we would be using it on the supercharged application is that it should pull more heat out of the air and make more power, especially in a boosted application. Remember in a prior episode of uh, Engine Masters, we tried E85 on a naturally aspirated deal and it was kind of no great shakes? In a stuff, that's not unusual to kind of see nothing, maybe some torque, but no real peak horsepower stuff. I think on the blower stuff, we're gonna see more of a, a difference. Big deal. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna fire it up now and find out what kind of power difference we might see based on the fact that it's gonna pull more heat out of the air. So we're gonna be looking at that manifold air temperature to drop and the power to go up. Warm it up, Brule. All right, here Thanks. we go. We'll sit here and watch from a social distance. So our okay. new peak power numbers are torque at 5,000 RPM, 970 pound-feet, and our peak horsepower is gonna be 1138.7 at 6,800 RPM. So we picked up 72 horsepower just by changing the fuel. Let's find out why. First of all, uh, manifold temperatures. Yeah, um, let's see here. Wow. So the manifold air temperature that we had just on gasoline at this same boost configuration on the blower was 218 degrees. Now, 148 degrees. That's a massive difference. Yeah, huge difference. Yeah. So now we're really seeing it. So what did it do to boost, though? If it cooled it off that much, did we reduce our boost? Yes, we did. Less boost, oh, wow. more power. Less boost, more power, because it's a colder manifold air temperature. Yeah, sure. There's, there's more air to burn. Yeah. And so exactly how much less? We did have 11.7 PSI, and it is now 10.5. So it's got a full 1.1 PSI less boost, which is significant. All right, let's look at the graph of actually the difference between the gasoline and the E85. You know how much I love graphs. Yeah, because it's just so visual. This. Wow. Wow. Everywhere in the curve, no downside, 100% win. Wow, that is definitely worth it. And it's it's like so much cheaper than race gas. That too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, yep. that's I remember all win. When we did this naturally aspirated, my conclusion was eh, but with boost, yes. Yeah. Big difference, yes. yeah. Fun stuff. Man, so that's pretty good. So E85 is awesome. You know it what's is? awesomer? E85 yeah, with nitrous? <laughs> Uh, oh! <laughs> party brulee. <laughs> you party at yours. <laughs> <laughs> Good answers, Steve. All right, last pulley swap. Unbeknownst to brulee, we're going from 18.75 overdrive to 23.4. <laughs> Brulee's shaking his head. <laughs> Well, Steve, you're smiling. It was lame. You know, at some point you have to go, yeah, that was pretty good, you know, 1160 horsepower or something, and we haven't even got to the nitrous yet. I'm disappointed. I like it. No, I mean, we have to look at the numbers before we can talk about the numbers. I get a preview, though, that's the difference. Yeah, I know. Huh. So I'm humming, because it looks like we only picked up like 26 horsepower. We made 1165.1 horsepower at 6,800 RPM, and the torque was 990.5 at 5,000. And I know it would seem absurd to be disappointed by that, but it looks like we picked up one full pound of boost with the pulley swap and only picked up 26 horsepower. When we go back to the gas stuff, though, that was pretty similar, too, towards the end of the curve. 
when we were up in that 11 or 12 pounds of boost area, it was it kind was of the same thing. Less sensitive. I just thought the E85 would improve that situation. What was our manifold temp? 158, so it came up 10 yeah. degrees than with the other pulley set, which is not bad. Yeah, you're just up against the law of diminishing returns here as far as blower speed, temperature, and stuff like that. Size, you know, yeah. there's just a lot going on there. So this motor's only 8.3 to 1 compression. If it was 10 and a half to 1, would it actually indicate more boost? I don't think so. Uh, I'm not I'm, Honestly, I got to think about that. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. The, the question, though, is based around the fact that I think we've shown today that boost is, it's a concept. In other words, when people walk around, it's like, you know, how much boost are you running? 12. Oh, well then, blah, blah, blah. Well, but it, it depends so much on manifold air temperature and the engine displacement and this, that, and the other. I can't tell you some of the frustration I go through, you know, with fuel injection guys in particular, mechanical fuel injection guys. And these are tuners, and they say, well, how much boost does it make? And it's like, it doesn't matter. It's well, how much power does it make? Yeah. That's what we have to do with the fuel system. And everyone relates to this boost thing. And we both know, or all of us know, that it's a restriction. Airflow is the biggest consideration here because yeah. if you put that supercharger, your turbo, or whatever is generating the boost up against a, a huge, huge restriction, restriction, you're going to have sky high boost, but you're right. not going to have any power. Yeah. Yeah. For example, we could put a much smaller camshaft in this, like a 230 at 50 camshaft. And make more boost. And make more boost, and a lot less power. Right. So <laughs> Yeah, so boost is just a concept. As we proved in our prior test, when we put the E85 in and made less boost, made more power, there's same, just more to thing. it. But nevertheless, I am, I'm let down by gaining only one pound of boost and only making 26 horsepower. So, as if 1165 horsepower isn't good enough, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the nitrous. Ready? Oh yeah. Here we go. Oh, it didn't even make an extra 200 horsepower, almost 1,359 horsepower, all the way up at 7,100 RPM. And the max torque that we saw on the nitrous this time was 1,116 pound feet Holy at 6,300 RPM. I saw that RPM. when I activated the nitrous and I went, come on, absorber, hang in there, hang yeah. in there. Yeah, for sure. I thought it was gonna make 1,365, exactly 200 horsepower, and it, it fell, what, six shy of that, but still. Well, in all fairness, the water temperature was about 10 higher, and I just couldn't get it down lower as the temperature in the day gets warmer. Make me feel better. Oh. Let's look at it on the graph. That always makes you feel better. That always makes you feel better. 1359.4, and what was it, 7,100 RPM? Yeah, but it, it, I mean, it activated there and then and had a dip. I think it's because it was a bit rich in there, and then it came back. I'd like to look at the air-fuel ratio curve. Nice. Yeah, started 11.5, went hair lean to 12.4, like right when you hit the button, and then 11.3 uh, up top. Rich, but fine. Yeah, and let's, how about the manifold temperature? Uh, 150 degrees. That's fine. Same, same yeah. as we saw before. And once again, not colder with the nitrous, which maybe it's the probe. Volume of nitrous, yeah. Some Volume of nitrous, whatever. About. What about boost, did that change? And the boost came up to 12.3 at peak. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. So what did we actually learn? <laughs> I, when you I take was just really, going for big power. But... I, was, I was gonna say what we learned is when you take a really cool blower motor and put smaller pulleys on it and nitrous, you can make 1,350 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. it's actually, that's a <laughs> lot of power. Yeah, it's good power. Yeah, that's really, really stout. But what we learned, I'm gonna say, is those limits of manifold temperature and where you can go with the blower and the pulleys and stuff like that. I think part of it too is what we learned is blower size. There are some limitations. You get to that point. What I frequently see like in the street style, non-stripped 871s, man, you get to 950, 980, and they're just, you can yeah, pull them until you're blue in the face and it's just not gonna make any more power. It'll yeah. probably make less because you're making the air hotter. They're just done. 
So oh, quality yeah. of blower and size has a lot to do with power potential. Well, this is making 200 more horsepower than your average shelf blower that you're seeing. And some of those are actually not even just turd blowers. They're just lower end yeah. blowers. Yeah. This thing's about the highest end 871 you can get, and it's making bench racing 200 more horsepower. So again, go to a 10, 12, 14. Yeah. You know, and they just get better and more power potential. I have one last question. Do you have more nitrous jets? Sure. Really? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I love the nitrous. I have all really? the jets. Oh, <laughs> so boy. Could we hit it with another uh, 100? 140 horsepower? Sure. And make 1,500? If you want. We could. We, I'll let you. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> wow, he is completely fearless when I it comes to your engine. We should have 1,500 horsepower. Let's go for it. <laughs> I think we need 1,500. Oh, man, I'm like your buddies egging you oh, on. Oh, man, I had yeah. no idea it was going to come to this. Yes! yes! <laughs> oh, look at the yes! happiness level. <laughs> Fry burger. <laughs>we have got a 350 shot tune-up on the nitrous system so we went from 175 That's... which actually made 200 horsepower yeah. to 350 which could actually make 400 extra horsepower so we're looking at making an excess of 1500 horsepower if everything goes right man you've got more guts than i do Freiburger. <laughs> seriously <laughs> going for double, the glory double the nitrous Relay, that was your most reckless moment I've ever witnessed out of you. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. You're all smiles, too. Absolutely. Oh, I know. I saw 1,500 go by, but let's look at the actual data. Okay, let's see. The We're good. Man. Oh, 05. just barely. It made 1505.3 <laughs> at 7,200 RPM. And it was probably on its way up. Yeah, And then you chickened bit. out. <laughs> Torque-wise, it made 1233.7 at 6,300 RPM. Oh, that's absurd. I could trim the tune up a little bit. Maybe pick up a few more. But I think we're I'm done. I'm happy we're no, good. No, we're done. I'm I'm comfortable now. <laughs> well, well, you're yeah. so you're so brave. <laughs> Ten minutes ago. No, it, it lived though. Yeah. So it did now live. I'm giving it a reprieve. <laughs> Fifteen hundred horsepower. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. So it basically picked up 150. What was the jets that you put in it? 36, 42. Let's look at the air fuel ratio. Oh, Brulio nailed it. It's a little rich. Like it's I said, a little I rich. Trim it, I could trim it a yeah. touch there, drop the fuel pressure probably, maybe go back two thousandths in, in uh, fuel. But Yeah, it was 11 close. to 1 at, at peak yeah, it doesn't uh, need horsepower. To be. It could be leaner than that by, you know, a point, honestly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we don't need to go hunting for another 10 or 15. <laughs> 1505. This is the most fun we've had in a while. It is. Yeah. Can we look at the curve? We can. Is it a curve or is it a table? <laughs> table. It's a table. <laughs> nice tune up. Do you want to compare it to the prior nitrous shot or no sure. nitrous? Yeah, well, let's, let's look, look at, at the prior nitrous, nitrous shot. Ba -boom. There you go. Oh, wow. As easy as a jet change. Look at that. And now throw on there the uh, so called NA, the blown but with no nitrous on E85. Uh, which one? That's going to be a final. Oh, weak, oh, weak, uh, man, weak. You, you can't have that garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when your junk only makes 1165, you're nobody. You got to go to the 1500. Oh, man. That I'm was happy. awesome, Freiburg. That was good. Yeah. Exactly what I was hoping for. Give yeah. me the COVID smack. That is a 350 horsepower jet off of NOS's chart. And it made? And it made 350, 350 horsepower. <laughs> Look at that. And table flat. Yeah. Pretty good stuff here. I'm really liking that. That is awesome. All right. This is like my favorite episode ever. Me too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, I like cool. it. Cool. Good stuff. Look how excited you are. You're like a little kid. <laughs> All right, Steve, I'm just going to stand here and gloat as you heap me with praise. Freiburger, you just made 1,505 horsepower. <laughs> and I'm super <laughs> proud of you, bro. Nice work. Thanks, man. I yeah. bet you did not think that either me or Brulee would be willing to go there. No. As a matter of fact, when we were in the 1300 range, I thought we were walking away. Oh, I know, but I could see the disappointment in your eyes. I know, and then yeah. confidently, with no holding back whatsoever, yeah. you looked Brulee straight in the eye and said, 
I think we're gonna step up to 350 horsepower worth of nitrous. <laughs> and he didn't flinch! What was going on? It was like opposite day. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. The thing is, I know that there's a lot of guys looking at this and they're going, but my junkyard LS with a turbo makes 1500 horsepower, and it might. But then you don't have this. Look at the big block with blower and nitrous. Oh, it definitely has presence. Nothing can top the visual appeal. Gloating aside, I'll gloat more. Here's the thing that's actually fantastic is the versatility of this to me, because on six pounds of boost on gasoline and no nitrous, you can have 900 horsepower on 91 octane and drive this thing anywhere, anytime. With complete reliability. Except for maybe a little valve train distress. It's got a lot of cam in it. Yeah. But then you just add a little bit of pulley and some race gas and you're making a thousand. And run it on E85 and you're making nearly 1200. Throw some nitrous on it on gas, you're making 1300. Throw some nitrous on it even more on E85, you're making 1500. You can just completely stab this in a race car and then as your terror diminishes, step to the next level. And then when the terror diminishes, <laughs> keep on going. That's what's great about this thing. Oh yeah. For that day where you just have to have your 1505 horsepower. Oh, man, I just You're don't all want set the episode to end, man. This is just the greatest thing ever. All right, that's a wrap for this episode of Engine Masters. And man, I'm just totally thrilled to death with my old Bonneville short block. And huge thanks to the guys at Blower Shop and NOS because greatness. I agree. It's still running. No, it lived. It did it like nothing. Fifteen hundred horsepower. Whoa. <laughs> How do you like my tune-up now? That was good. Oh. <laughs> did you see the afterburner?